Just think about your expectation, your belief. 2022. Specific things you're believing God's favor on your life for. Let's believe in some of those impossible things. Young people coming back to the Lord. Favor coming back into your business. Favor coming back into your work. Healing for your marriage. Breakthrough in your personal life. Addictions broken in Jesus' name. Chains falling off. I love Luke 4.19 when it's speaking of Jesus and his mission on earth. And it says to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I'm encouraging you to look into the face of Jesus and decide that's where your hope is. Your strength is in the name of the Lord. I proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. God's favor. It is undeserved. He gives it freely to every one of us. That to me is where it all begins. I think, you know, in a world where it's so like, you know, you go to school and you have your favorite, your in group, and they the can family, always be the- family, you have the favorite child. Oh, the fa <laughs> we have three. Okay, they're all the favorites if no, you're watching. No, my brother was the favorite. If he's watching, he was the favorite. In your family? <laughs> yeah, There's true. always a favorite, but the awesome thing is we're all his favorite. The difference between favour and favouritism, God's favour is for every one of us. The interesting thing about this passage in Luke 4 is Jesus quoting from Isaiah, speaking about this year of the Lord's favour, which could also uh, be interpreted as the year of Jubilee. Yeah. And uh, the year of Jubilee in the Jewish custom is an understanding of uh, forgiveness of debt. Yes. So it's all about forgiveness, uh, slaves being set free. Yes. So it's all about freedom. And thirdly, it's all about new beginning. Yeah. Let's believe in this year of favour for new beginnings, yes. for His favour to be the catalyst for new things, to burst forth, to break forth uh, in our lives. My father was a former Catholic priest met my mom and realized it wasn't for him, and he gave us two weeks' notice. As far as my family goes, we were a very tight unit. I have to be perfectly honest, no, I didn't have any friends, but I didn't feel that I lacked anything. I had my dad, he was my best friend. I was very close with my brother Joseph, I was close to my mom, but especially my dad and I were incredibly close. Joseph has cerebral palsy quadriplegic. We grew up doing everything together. Whenever Joseph wasn't feeling well, my mom would just say, play the violin for him. So I, I would play it and thinking like, oh, I'm doing like music therapy. Apparently it was so bad, it would make him so happy and hysterical. When we would be in the hospital with Joseph, it was always just us. You know, you get so drained, the emotional drain, being in a hospital room by yourself. My brother got frightfully sick. I witness a code red, was essentially watching him die. And at that moment, I had this feeling to just pray to God and seek him. God, I need you. And in that moment, I saw a miracle before my eyes. They were able to get in, intervene, patch up Joseph, and came back to normal. And through that moment, I recommitted my life to Jesus. However, I still I didn't need people. I had me, myself, and I. I had my dad, Joseph, my mom, my cousin, and I could seek God on my own. Did devotionals on my own, read the Bible on my own, watch preachings on my own. That was great. I was just living my best life. So I thought. I was familiar with United. Definitely started listening to the music a lot more after my reawakening, if you will. So I had heard that there was a church in New York, and one day I finally decided to check it out. I had an encounter with Jesus Christ. The worship, the people, this vibrant life for ultimately seeking God. 
It was the first time I'd ever encountered God in a room outside of personal prayer time. I made the, the comment to my family, especially to my mom, because my mom was very familiar with Hillsong. However, I really don't know if dad's gonna like it. Like, it's, it's not what he's used to. And my dad overheard. I was like, no, I'll check, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. So we, we all go as a family. This is the first time my brother had ever gone to church. And he's welcomed and my father comes in. And my dad loved it. My dad would always make the comment. He said, when I walk in this church, to me, this is what heaven looks like. So I'm going. Finally, I remember God just giving me this revelation, like, yeah, you need friends. We would do these after-service hangouts in different restaurants. So I remember this particular Sunday I was gonna be at a Chipotle. So I kind of had this like little dialogue with God, like, all right, listen, I'm gonna go. So I went. I had an amazing time meeting people, and I had my burrito, so it was a win-win. I was coming home, actually after getting dinner with friends one night, and my dad was in the phone in the other room. He's talking actually about church to his friends. He's like, yeah, Patrick finally has community, which tells me clearly my dad knew, like, okay, we're best friends, but you need more than, than me. Like, he said it with such peace, like, he finally has community. Having Rafa for the first time, it was such a joy. He was so tiny, he was so cute with the big round eyes. It was like my dream to build a family for us, for Rafa. I met an uh, Indonesian guy based in Australia. We fell in love and then he asked me to marry him. It was such a, a beautiful moment. I feel like, yes, this time, I have an opportunity to build a family again. I start to feel a bit concerned about Rafa's development. He didn't talk. He didn't respond when I call his name. And then he constantly got meltdown. That was very heartbreaking to see. I went to doctor and Rafa got diagnosed with ASD level three. It's a autism spectrum disorder. I was working three jobs and look after Rafa. All that put an honest strain to our marriage. I started to believe this struggling, Rafa struggling is because of me. This is my fault. One moment, the stress really hit me. I couldn't breathe, my body is stiff. I thought I was gonna die on that night. The ambulance came and then took me to her the hospital. Then I say, you got panic attack. Me and my husband separated. Again, now it's only me and Rafa, only two of us. I keep thinking, I just want to, to build a family. Why is it so hard? This is so unfair for this child. He just wants to feel safe, feel secure, feel loved, right? I feel I don't have any more hope. I'm angry, I just feel bitter. I was scared. I was thinking like, oh, what should we do? There's a little voice telling in my heart, like, go to church. I haven't been to church for a long, long time. I want to come back again. My friend mentioned about Hillsong Church. It's quite a long way to get a about two hours trip. I didn't know how Rafa can cope, but I just do it. The longing in my heart is was greater than my situation on that time. When we passed the roundabout at the hills, I saw the sign, the big sign, welcome home. I went to the room in the treasure chest. When I saw the room, I just cried. I never expected this support from the church like this. Everything all set up to support this kid and then to make them feel safe. I don't need to be worried to leave Rafa in here while I go to the service. His song just launched the song, Who You Say I Am. 
that song really really sp speak to me deeply I am who you say I am I am chosen I'm a child of God that was the answer that I'm looking for it's just like a confirmation for me God love me God love Raphael because he made us suddenly like I feel just peace in my heart I know someone hold my hand someone just be there with me so I think I think me and Rafa will be okay so since that I'm craving for more I'm craving for more about God's Word I reading my Bible I switched that that negative thought I started to declare to myself about what God's promises to us. I am a child of God. I'm chosen. I'm loved. I'm forgiven. I'm safe. I'm healed. Raphael is fearfully and wonderfully made. After a while, I'm learning to forgive myself. It seems like even in this struggle, my heart sings with joy. When I first came to Hillsong Church, it was actually called Hills Christian Life Centre back in the day. I was like, okay, what have I come to? This is crazy. In that time of the service where they said, turn around and say hi to someone around you, my heart started to beat. I was like, oh no, now I've got to talk to someone. And I loved the word and the worship, but I didn't really know anyone. I didn't have any friends. And I remember saying to God in my heart, if I don't make a friend today, I don't know if I can keep coming back. And that weekend I went to church and I made a friend. Do you know, she was actually the glue that kept me coming back. I started coming along to church a little bit after Lucinda. That's how we met. We, I think it was a summer camp. We're in love. We're still in love. 29 years married, coming up to... 30. 30. <laughs> 30 years next year, guys. Next year. So it's 29 this yeah, year. 29 yeah, see, I was, I was yeah. correct. Pastor Brian did our wedding with a mullet and a great handlebar moustache. We've got the photos to prove it just have been on this journey ever since of loving Jesus and doing our very best to build his church. We served in the youth ministry for a long time uh, and we loved it. I was involved with the guys who ended up creating what's now the Hillsong United team and then feeling the call of God to move to South Africa. We need to send our best. And so Phil and Lucinda Dooley are going to be moving to Cape Town. We've built now a church there with the most incredible people that's right across South Africa and up into Nairobi, Kenya, and getting going in Lagos and in Mauritius, but then around the world at the same time. Uh, it's just been incredible to be part of that. We have been completely surprised yeah. and overwhelmed yeah. in so many ways. And we just are doing our best, yeah. I think like everybody, to serve God faithfully, to keep loving people and keep it simple. And here we are, you know, in this role for the interim. For us, the leadership journey has been step by step, little bit by little bit, but it's always been about whatever your hand finds to do and do it with all your heart as unto the Lord and to serve Him with gladness. And what a privilege we get to invest into the lives of others. To me, in the middle of a pandemic and all the challenges, whatever they might look like around the world, you have moments when you're like, man, there is difficulty. As a person of faith, mm. you are up against if you want to call it a world system that is not really always, you know, encouraging you to live a biblical life. And so you're facing these challenges. That is not an absence of God's favour. That is an opportunity for people yeah. of faith to say, God, you are with me in this difficulty, in this challenge. I'm believing for your favour to be on my life. That to me is many times the reality of our faith in difficult moments. That's when God really shows up. God knew there was going to be a point in my life where my whole Lone Ranger thing just wasn't going to work. When my father was diagnosed with cancer, I pushed back my start of med school. I'm spending months sleeping on a chair. That should have been the worst year of my life. And it wasn't the worst. Some of the best memories I have is in that season. I grew in my faith. My father was also receiving so much 
care and love from my friends. The hospital never felt the same way again after having that community. As he beat the cancer, things were going seemingly well. However, everything took a very unexpected dark turn. My father had a cardiac arrest. It was in a coma for a week, and we had people around the clock. That hospital room was never empty. I was never alone. A week later, his blood pressure kept dropping, 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 and ultimately, um, he, he went to heaven. I can't imagine what our final chapter would have looked like without having this, having this home, having this community. It brought us even closer together. And the funeral was exactly 12 biological relatives, and the rest was 150 people from our church. So I never felt alone. What was very valuable for me was the fact that the support and the care didn't end there. And to have people wiser, more mature in their faith than me to tell me, yeah, you're, you're not okay. But that's, that's okay. We're going to get you help. They're in this case, grief counseling. That was God's favor in my life that I didn't have to go through alone. It was okay to just be myself. And honestly, I don't know if everyone has that opportunity. This community, this home has been with me through my worst. Why am I not gonna stick around? I had to have that humbling moment, like, all right, apparently I don't have it all together. Like, apparently I need more than just me, myself, and I. And that was God's favor. The first step can be just showing up and actually deciding to show up. I know what it's like to go with blinders on, just in and out, but church isn't meant to be a movie theater. I think there's something very powerful in building something. I take every task as a way to build community everywhere I go now. The whole world's learning a new normal. I had to learn a new normal without my dad. I'm still learning it, but it's been beautiful to be able to do it with community by my side as I still learn it. I have a connect group now. This community, now they become our family. Before I keep asking why it's so hard to just build a family, now it seems like it's growing. The family growing, not only one, two family, but more than that. And then it's such a blessing for us. Father God, thank you for tonight that we can gather together here as a family, Lord. We are here together to encourage each other, to support each other, to pray together. Okay. Amen. 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 This is God's favor. Yeah, our living miracle. Life now with Rafa, it's not only about two of us, but we have these beautiful people around us. Rafa feel not only with mommy, but he have a friends, he have someone that he can play with as well. Family sometimes messy, but you know, that's a family. Like, you, you, you want to grow together. And then I found it now. God is the provider. He provides everything that we need more than what we want. You know, the challenge is still there, but God always has his hand everywhere. There's a still a purpose for me and Lafa in this life. There's a hope when we walk with him. I see the church more necessary across the earth than it ever has been. More than ever, our prayer is this year, we have healthy church community. People are welcomed back. People feel like this is a place that truly is a home where they can relax and be themselves and experience this favour and grace of God on their lives. I am grateful for the season that we've been in. I'm grateful for the season of where God is taking us and we're gonna see Him do the most amazing, supernatural, unprecedented things. Even in the world, if there is chaos and even if there is disorder, in the waiting, He's gonna bring completeness and perfection. Beautiful. God's favour for Hillsong Church 2022. It is all of those things from Jubilee that we are going to feel the weight of 
debt of heavy burdens lifted. I'm believing for people to find freedom and new beginnings, yeah. that this is going to be a year of God doing new, fresh things in our church and right across the world that there's new, exciting branches kind of moving, growing forward and with beautiful new fruit on them. This favour that we're experiencing going, wow, God, you're so gracious and you're so kind and we are so grateful. I'm believing in 2022 that we're going to see a united church, a church of generations and races and ethnicities, all united around the cause of Jesus Christ. The church is very much needed. We should be a light in our cities y creyendo que Dios va a abrir puertas para que la voz de la iglesia sea escuchada en colegios, en hospitales, en ayuntamientos, en la política, una voz de esperanza que hable del nombre de Jesús en los tiempos que estamos viviendo. I think seeing people come to faith, more people respond to the good news of Jesus and the gospel. Amen. Really for the next generation to rise up and be all that God's called them to be. Oh, I'm believing to see more people get saved. I'm believing to see people step into their God potential. To chaque person puisse avoir une révélation de la Benediction to Dieu dans leur vie and dans leur famille. Бог продолжает строить церковь, но по-другому. Продолжает спасать людей удивительным образом. May we continue to see God's hand and favor at work this year. That we would expand our warm and welcoming family roundtable to one and all. Últimamente siento que Dios está poniendo en nuestros corazones que este 2022 tenemos que tener una fe audaz. I den här spännande perioden hvor vi ser att Gud genuppbygger sin kyrka så upplever att han på en speciell måte har lagt det på våra hjärtar att vi gör det vi gör utifrån styrka. Pray we wouldn't waste the season or overlook or look down on God's pruning but in every season through the good and the bad that we would actually present ourselves mature in him proclaiming Jesus that is God's favor all over it. I'm believing God for restoring double after everything we've been through to you to our house to each and every one here in this voice. I'm believing for double for you. Han har alltid en väg framåt. Att han är vägen framåt. Där att om musim berikutnya daripada gereja kita saya percaya bahwa perkenanan Tuhan akan lebih nyata lagi bukan saja untuk gereja kita tapi setiap individu yang ada. Auch wenn die Zeiten herausfordernd sind, in denen wir gerade sind, doch ist Gott mit seiner Güte am Wirken im Leben von Menschen. Neimovirna Božja virnis i blagodat u budjeki sezon. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. And I think the great days and great days and greater days ahead of us, and I couldn't be more pumped about 2022. Revival is on the rise here in the U.S. A return of the move of the Holy Spirit. We're just ready to go new places, take new territory, have fun while we're doing it. Creio mesmo que muitas pessoas vão ter um encontro verdadeiro com Deus. Credem, primim, misericórdia mundial e gata. We can't presume on yeah. what he will sovereignly do, but wouldn't that just be the favor of God, the grace and kindness? of God to allow us to take a part in that. He is in every detail, in every moment, in every struggle, in every win, and when we look for Him, we find that we have everything we need for Him to be glorified and for revival to take place right now. Don't stop believing for miracles. Don't stop believing for victory. Don't stop believing God to bring blessing and fruitfulness and success into your life. Don't stop believing for healing. Don't stop believing for incredible favor in Jesus' name. Can we never lose sight that we are called to exemplify an oasis where dry and thirsty souls come? Could it be a house that truly reflects His nature, character, and love? Could it be a house that truly makes famous His name his splendor, his majesty, a house that can both humbly and proudly boast that heaven is in her midst.